Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So today, I wanted to cover this release called PSPSH. Now, I talked about this just the other day on the PlayStation Homebrew News, but I wanted to look a little bit closer into it, especially as I'm starting to see all kinds of potential. So if we take a look at what this is, is, is that it is a primitive shell server for the PlayStation 4 and the 5 using the Master Core exploit that's in the PS2 emulator. Now, obviously, I've covered Master Core in length on the channel here, but if you want to learn more about that, check out some of my past videos. Now, it does say right over here, connecting to the server, it says the server does not implement the Telnet protocol correctly. Therefore, it's recommended that you use a raw TCP connection to the server on port 9030. But we can see that there is all kinds of available commands from LS to list the folders and files in the current working directory to CD to change the working directory, copy a file, move a file. We'll also take a look at PWD. So I will definitely run PWD in this. And then yes, we will absolutely pop a notification. So it displays a notification with your text. You can upload a file which I'm not so certain how helpful that may be, but we will find out. And then there's also download functionality. We will absolutely try to download a file from our 10.50 PlayStation 4, and then you can play a game ISO. So this is really already the built-in functionality that Master Core has, but you can just run this command called play if you would like to, and then exit to exit the server. Now, there is some information here about to download a file from the server to use this PSPSH file receiver, which I will show you how to use this also in this video. There is a few other known issues and limitations, but I don't think they will affect us that much. So if you do go over here to releases, what I would recommend that you do is to download whatever the L file is that is for the system that you want to try this on. For myself, I am on 10.50, so I will download that one and I will give that a shot. Now I am going to be using the USB method, so we won't be sending it over the network. I'm just gonna copy this ELF file to my USB drive. Again, I have instructions on that if you wanna set that up for yourself. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over there and do that now. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll press the start button here and we're going to restore a game. And okay, so we're going to select no on the USB game loader. And we are gonna say yes right here to PS PSH for 10.50. Okay, and so right there it shows it is listening on port 9030. And just one other quick thing, you want to make sure that you get your IP address before moving forward for your PlayStation 4 on your network. Okay, so I am just using Windows Subsystem for Linux and this is Ubuntu that I'm running. And so from right here, what we will need to do is we'll need to type in the word Telnet and then the IP address of the PlayStation 4 10.0.0.140 and the port that we're gonna to connect to is going to be 9030 and now press return and so now we are actually into our playstation 4 10.50 now there's a bunch of different commands that we can go ahead and we can try here so we're going to begin right here with just a directory listing so let's just do an ls here and we can see that we've got a couple of different folders such as app zero we will jump into the one that says app zero and now I do another listing right here we can see the emulator running so where it says app zero and then a slash and you see the ps2 emu compiler dot self that is the emulation that the playstation built that we're currently utilizing with this exploit and so really what you see right here is is that this is okage shadow king running right now in the sandbox so since we can list all of the files and folders again we can navigate folders with just the cd or the change directory command 
copy a file, we could move a file or delete a file, which I won't show those here. You can print the working directory in this release. So when you do a PWD, it just prints the working directory. And we can see right now we're currently in the root directory. But if we went over to app zero and did PWD, well, again, it's just going to show that or print that out to the screen. There is also a notification that you can send by typing in the word notification here. Subscribe to MB Crump, and we'll give that a shot. And there it is. Well, at least it says the word subscribe. And I think that is because I did not put any quotations around that. Okay, so I'll just fix it by doing this. And there we go. Subscribe to MB Crump. Okay, the demo is over. It looks like also there is the ability to upload and download files from the device. So what I want to do is maybe we'll try the download. So I'm going to download the configuration file for the PlayStation 2 emulator that's currently running. Okay, so now it says connect and download the file with PS-PSH file receiver or use your own tool on the TCP port 9045. And what they are referring to is this repo right here. And it says that this is used to download files from the PSPSH server. And there is a couple of different options. It looks like you can use a graphical user interface or you can use the command prompt. And if you go into the source right here, you will see whichever version of the operating system that you're running. So for Windows, I would basically download this Python script right here, and then I would run it typically on the command line. Now, you can obviously use this, and I'm sure that this is wonderful, but if we go to the main page and then go over here to releases and then look at the assets, then there is the file that we will need for Windows. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that. You will need to select the option right there to keep it. And if you are on Mac, there is a DMG file that you could take advantage of. So I'm going to go ahead and run that now and we'll go to more info and then run anyway. So we are going to enter the IP address of your PS4 or PS5. Let's see if this works. Okay, so there it goes. Successfully received the file from the PS4 and 5. And it put them over here in this temp folder. So let's go to that folder now. Okay, so inside of that temp folder, we can see there is a PS, PSH output. So we may try opening that with like notepad. And here is the output. And yes, that does look like what we would expect in a config file. At least I can see there is the Lua stuff. There is the PS2. And yes, there it is. There's the title ID. So now I know 100% that this is the file that we were just looking for. So that is very awesome that you can download a file from a PS4 that is on 10.50 with this. And so really the other command is just the play command to play a PS2 ISO with or without a configuration file and then exit which terminates the server. So anyway, we've covered every single one of these uh, so far today, at least what's been implemented so far. So anyway, you know, uh, hats off to the developer here for building this and for putting this together. I think this is going to be a huge win and it's just absolutely awesome. Again, just to come over here, you know, and see all of the different support that is already out there for the different firmwares. So anyway, thank you so very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Michael out.